Hi, welcome back to Steve's Place Down Under. I'm Steve. Today it's Saturday and we're going to use the Albion truck and the hopefully the Clark Michigan, the, the old loader there. If we can't get it going then we'll, we'll just use a new Holland tractor. But if you haven't seen us before, we play with all this old sort of stuff. This is obviously a British truck and then we've got a lot of American trucks and tractors and some old plant equipment and all that sort of stuff. So if you're new here, go back and check out all the previous episodes and there's a lot to come. So for those of you who watched the one with the, or done the radiator, um, pad the radiator out, done the water pump and changed the, the fuel filters, it's, it's been hard to start since then. So I changed the seals on the filter itself, but there's a separator halfway down the chassis that um, the seals are a bit, bit hard. So I'm suspecting it's sucking air there, but we might just pressurize the tank and see if it does leak there. If not, I'm, I don't know. It could be a lift pump. It could be, could be a number of things. So um, we're going to use it to cart some rotor mill from, which is road based, ground up roads. Um, and we're going to make a hard stand so we can move all the, all the truck collection to the other side of the road because we're going to seed all this and plant it so on, on that side of the road. For, there's a reason behind all that but we just need all the room we can so we'll do a bit of work to this. I've got a brake booster to put on the front axle um, and just sort that fuel problem out and then the Clark, I think it's right to go but the lever is really tight for those of you who may have seen the previous episode where I moved all the equipment, that was part of that episode, depends on how we air it. So um, I think that's all we've got to do to that one. There should be, I don't know, I'm thinking 10 load maybe, but pretty high sides on it, may, may not be that much. I'll fill her up. Um, it's, not, it's not a long run, but we'll do some cab in cab stuff and we'll, we'll sit. Dad's going to be on the, the day we dick, the little excavator we got, and we'll... Um, set it up and film a bit of that too, a bit of loading, a bit of in cab, a bit of, a bit of this end. So um, I don't know if some of you have seen before, but I'll just show you. Up the paddock there, there's an old Butterbox Echo. Now, she's, uh, I had to sneak past her because her and I, we used to be really close and, and we still are, but she's been a bit funny with me since this, um, since I've got this, since I've got this Leyland, so this this Albion, so um, sort of tiptoed past her this morning, so we don't wake her up because you know I'm not, not sure she likes this one. So um, she's she's been a bit hard to start, and that she's starting to play up. She senses a little bit of a love triangle, I think. But anyway, she will we'll leave her asleep. Little does she know, this one's much much easier to get along with. So I'll check the fuel, which was right last time. I don't think there's any leaks. And I'll pressurise the tank. Just I think it's that separator, but it could be even the filter that I could have buggered it up. But I, I don't think so. They're fairly straightforward, but it's getting air somewhere, I suspect. So, and then we'll roll under it and do the. It's been raining, but it's dry under there. Okay, so I changed the the booster off camera. Um, I was just going to change the diaphragm, but <clears throat> it's a little bit smaller this one. I don't think it's got quite the travel either, so um, the S cam moved a lot further than I think the booster's going to go, so that wheel must be out. I'm not going to adjust it now, but it's going to stop the air leak anyway. I, I, it'll, it'll still work, but <clears throat> probably not until its full potential. Now, I had the tank pressurised. I didn't film that because the noise of the compressor, but I didn't find any leaks. <coughs> I'll just swing up into her here. There was a small one on top of the filter housing there, the bolt that holds the bowl on the bottom. But that was about it. I did prime it with the with the um, get the right spanner here with the lift pump, but only to the only to the injector pump. So I'll just crack a few of these. See if we got her up there and what's going to happen here. Three, you got it. Stressed up, 
bugger of a thing. It was so good before I played with it. Must have disturbed something just changing those filters. Okay, she's going obviously. I didn't film the bleeding process because it was down beside the engine there and there's no way of getting the camera in there and myself. So the top of the inline pump was full of air, which it always is for some reason. So could even be a check valve in the lift pump, letting it run back, I don't know. But um, it's going now. I might just give the windscreen a wipe over, then we'll go and get the loader going. This is nothing to do with the machine. I'll just come down and get some oil here. Um, the transmission of that loader, I'll just show you the mess these, these are bow birds here in Australia, there's no bird in there but they make a nest out of anything blue. So you can see they're all milk bottle caps, a um, bit of blue plastic from the bin or whatever, well, I don't know where they get it because all our milk bottles go in the recycling bin here so I don't know how they get the lids but they obviously fly all over town here because they've only got one neighbour. So where they're getting all that from I'm not sure, they're all just bottle caps bits of blue plastic wrappers and stuff, they just, they make a mess, but anything blue, look at that, they make the nest and all that blue stuff around it. There was another one over here somewhere. Yeah, look, there's an old one there too. Unreal. Anyway, back to it. My apologies for not showing the loader starting. It started straight up fine, but I did a bit of a commentary on, on how and where I got it and what I paid for it but basically the cat the microphone didn't pick it up good enough so I thought I'd just show you it going so um, there is more of this machine back in the episodes if you want to hear about where I got it and, and, and how, what condition it was in and, and what was going to happen to it and what I paid for it. Basically I give $200 for it but there's a story behind it so thank you.
just shut her off. It's a fair walk back there. I don't like letting it glaze up even though it's rooted already. My dad's down here on the Daywood Dick. The reason I call it that because that's his name, he's never off it. He's pulling the grass off. This material's been here that long, it's just covered in grass. So if this is a good way of getting rid of it, even though we do need it, um, killing two birds is one one stone basically because we want to we want to use all this area down here too. About a two acre strip I got down. This is the back gate into my place. So I'll go and get the truck left we'll to park her over there and, and we'll load her. Come back down and just show you how long it has been here, this stuff. You can see the size of these. I mean, these grow quick. It's no real indication, but these are wattle trees. Look how quick it's grown over out of that heap. It's probably been about three years, if that. It's just unbelievable. Now there's going to be big stumps in there when we try and get that material out. Dad's car was halfway down the lane here, so I just take it back. Then we haven't got too much stuff down there. I'll have to come down and mow this grass too. Real sticky this grass, sticks to all your bumper bars and that when you, when you drive, even on the road, that stuff in the middle makes a mess of your car. All right, we'll see if she goes, it's been a couple of hours now, it's probably all run back, all the tools are down the other end, but good looking thing. You probably notice the, the Steve's Place emblem or logo on the door, I sort of, my wife's got a, like an inventory of uh, merch up there and I, She's looking for these two. This is where they went. So I thought she needed a, uh, a logo on her. One thing I haven't done is put a can holder in this thing. Not that I'm having one yet, but it certainly will be before the day's out. Okay, see if she goes. <laughs> Sure as the sun rises.
Okay, here we go. I don't know how much weight's on it. It's the biggest load I've had yet. There she goes. Pretty heavy. I can't imagine trying to get it up to speed on the road. So you'll notice here that the hoist won't lift it. Um, it's loaded, I, I don't know, it's, it's, it's not too heavy I wouldn't think, but it, it's a decent hoist and a decent pump, but it's, I, had to, I had to shake the load out to get it further back so it would lift it. And in between stages of the hoist, each stage was getting jammed too, so it hit the first, like, second stage was about to come out, then the hoist had stopped, so. I eventually started loading it against the tailgate, but I couldn't find a relief valve in the in the system anywhere. It's just a pump and a valve without, I couldn't find a relief valve. Unless it's built into the pump, I'm not sure, but I don't, there's obviously a problem with it. It wasn't designed to do this. Um, it should lift that easy enough. But later on, I do find a crushed hose, but that's not the case here. It just wouldn't wouldn't lift that weight. So um, that's why I'm doing the voiceover, because I couldn't explain it.
probably wondering why I haven't closed the tailgate. Um, it's on a bit of a grade where I'm tipping. I don't really want to get out on the handbrake and, and unlock the thing. So I'm just sort of, I don't know whether to give it a go or just try it, keep going how I am. As you can see, I lost a quarter of a bucket there, but I can't, I'm trying to load it towards the back so it does lift it. Okay, this is going to be rough, but at least it's an action shot inside the Clark. It's going to be very rough. I just got down and closed the tailgate, so we'll try and see how that goes. See if we can park it on the handbrake when we release it.
don't judge my loader driving skills on this $200 scrap bin special. Um, the levers are that. If you've seen this fairly unique action I've got on this lever, it is that stiff. Like, you sort of got to jar it, so it's hard to keep a clean floor, but I think we're going all right with her. I just got to the other end of the jobby and tried to put the hoist up as you've seen, but what the hell's going on here? Felt there was no, no resistance on the up and down lever. So I got out and I felt like the, the rod wasn't connected to the control valve, but it is. But then I'll get down, this hose is sucked in. Um, it's pulling that hose in, so it's not letting any oil through. It's like me trying to have a malt sandwich about taking the lid off it. So she's certainly not going to work there. Um, I'll have to take that hose off and try and um, try and stop the oil coming out while I race up the shed and try and get one. 
I thought it was all over, but it's only very simple. Okay, bear with me. So you just heard me mention malt sandwich. I thought, what a magnificent idea. So I just put together like a little bit of a, like a snack pack and bring on the job with us on this campaign. I found this up the shed, really thick wall stuff. So I reckon, I reckon unless you can suck the chrome off a toe ball, you're not pulling that in like that last hose. So I'll line you up here. I don't know what you're gonna see here, but anyway. Got some shiny clamps on it too, I'll have to hopefully they rust up quick, we don't want anyone to see that. I don't know if it's the exact size. I'm gonna have to lay down. of resistance pushing it on which is fine the clamp will pull the rest in not as good as I'd like but excuse the heavy breathing struggle to breathe sometimes actually got up real early this morning I'm building that Nissan for me mate I've been doing that each night after work so you get home at sort of half past six of the night going to the shed for an hour or so till my wife goes to work then going over and with the kids and we didn't have to work this morning so I got up like I was going to work and went to the shed to do that uh, TD42 Nissan patrol engine there's a video coming up on that not of the build just of the progress um, sort of like welding videos if you do an engine one they uh, everyone has their own ideas and I, I do get it I'd rather not have those comments I just Show each stage and then we'll show fitting it and first start and all that sort of thing. That's magnificent. Clamps are a bit big, but they've got enough enough thread on them to pull them round. I'm more than happy with that. Put them old clamps back in stock. They're the good old ones that you can't buy anymore. One of them is one's rubbish. I'll see if she works. She did it. Um, 
I don't know that I can see a relief valve on this control valve, but it's, it's got to have one somewhere, it has to. I don't know if it's building with a pump or if it's internal, because there's no port for a relief valve in here. This is going to nip her up, but I can't see anything. I'll just check the oil level. just found that probably why it sucked it in because the the hornets have built in the breather tube of the hydraulic tank there was a massive vacuum in there that's why it would have pulled that last hose in as the oil heated and softened it and now this they find everything these bloody things you wouldn't want to walk around without your shorts on for too long So hard to judge in these little mirrors, they're just pathetic. It's, it's one downfall of this truck. Need some East Coast mirrors on her. West Coast mirrors, sorry. But the, off the American trucks, they're just magnificent. I've got to set up there for the Louisville. So hard to judge where the pile is. Well I got her up again, I don't know what happened, I just popped the hose off, make sure there's oil to the pump and then I cranked it back up and up it went, so I don't know, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna put some thicker oil, just top it up with some older, thicker oil I've got here, just to thicken it up a bit, it is a bit thin because it's watery, I'm not gonna change it now because I'm doing a job, but it, it, it certainly will be changed, um, even with some engine oil or something a bit thicker, because as the older parts are worn a bit, but, or even a bottle of treatment, Lucas or something, but anyway I'll, I'll turn the camera off and just put some. Uh, I think it's I think it's engine oil I got. It might even be S50 or something like that. Anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll it's not stuff I use in engines. I'll just tip it in to thicken it up and I'll we'll keep going.
back down the other end now, the, the loader broke down, she was, I was just moving one heap to the other, then it went to full lock. Then the steering wheel just spun round and round, so it's not controlling the steering box. It's actually like just like a normal steering box with an actuator in it that, that controls the, um, the steering cylinders down on the articulation. So you can see how much short we are. I thought it was a lot of dirt, but when you see it leveled out, it's not. So um, I probably won't film fixing that. I'll just do it in my own leisure, but we'll finish this in our own time. But you can see what we're trying to do here. Then all those trucks, over there we'll be coming back into here then we can keep the weeds off them we can keep just keep them down the, the bit that will grow through that will just poison and, and be done with it okay forgive me if the sounds out my thing on the it's been a long day that went went flat so um thanks to everyone for watching we'll, we'll just do this in our own leisure finish this video off but then we'll there'll be a series of videos on moving those trucks some we won't start just because i don't want to uh, use all my first starts up because they're fairly powerful videos when you do this sort of thing so some will just lift up with the forklift and run on the front axle some will start um, but yeah they've all got to be moved regardless so thanks to patreon members you fellas are just magnificent I hope you appreciate the stuff i send you on the on the side um apart, uh, away from the normal episodes um and all those people that buy merchandise and like share subscribe and and we'll see you in the next one thank you